Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call her law, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. The Akim is pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new fruit, the new believers, the new viewership coming into this faith. Just back with another lesson, and I just want to go into a topic of the word of faith, which we preach, because the scriptures tells you in Ephesians, the second chapter, that faith is a gift. And that's a gift from on high, from the heavenly father, who the world ignorantly calls God, which we know his true name is Yahweh, and his only begotten son's name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ is Yahweh Shah. You know, the, the, the faith that we have, that's a gift from heaven and believing certain future events that are set to play out before they actually happen and beyond that beyond just the mere belief you know having the wherewithal and being compelled in the spirit to go out and boldly confess these things man amongst this world of scoffers mockers naysayers just people who are under the total uh mind vibration of the spiritual demon satan so this is a beautiful thing man you know even though the scriptures talks about the foolishness of preaching, but at the same time, the foolishness of preaching is pleasing to the heavenly father. And ultimately, the word of faith, which we preach, is going to lead to salvation, like it says. And I'm just going to uh, loosely quote it in wisdom, of, wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Then shall they stand in great boldness uh, 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 in front of the faces of that afflicted them, man. And they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of our salvation. I'm loosely paraphrasing. Wisdom of Solomon 5, when you read in the Apocrypha, which the Apocrypha is a part of the 1611 King James Version Bible. But we're standing on our feet, the, the elect of the nation of Israel, you know, starting with the preachers, the prophets that are teaching the correct doctrine, man. And this spoken word, man, is just shape shifting the earth as we know it. This current earth and rulership that's just engulfed in pure wickedness, man. We're going to overcome this world through our faith, through the words that we preach. And it's all going to lead to salvation as we're speaking the most highs, allowing more things to manifest in the spirit, man. So this is not some uh, insignificant thing when you see brothers out on the highways and the byways with the replicas of our ancient garments, which a lot of people, they call dresses, you know, those weird outfits, whatever they want to call it. But. We got a lot to look forward to, man. And this is just more reason to show uh, more appreciation and, and gratitude for what the Lord gave us, man. And just try to grow and elevate in it more fervently day for day. But before I ramble on, I'll just start off here in, in the uh, Apocrypha in 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, right at the top. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. So that's the main message, because the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, that's the spirit of prophecy. That's pursuant to Revelation 19 and 10. And prophesy means to speak before. So we're speaking the will of the Heavenly Father before it actually happens, man. So that's a that's power in that. This is really a miracle, man. You know, brothers waking up and preaching this word. And it says, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. And my people is talking about you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans here in America and spread throughout the four corners of the earth. According to prophecy, you make up the 12 lost tribes of the nation of Israel. But even within the nation of Israel, the most high, he's only gathering the elect because a majority, two thirds, namely of our own people are wicked as all hell. And they're going to have to be judged on this side, but they'll come back in the kingdom in their right state of mind. But the word was only given to the nation of Israel, like it says in Psalms 147 and 19. And it says, uh, behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So the Lord put his words in our mouth. We're doing the will of the Lord, referring to the prophets, the, the speakers, the teachers, the brothers that's pushing his word, you know, starting with our apostles and elders, bishops and the men throughout the order of Great Millstone, you know. Because I believe, you know, that the 100 percent truth, you know, is within the men who teach the doctrine of Great Millstone. I'll just say it that way. It don't necessarily mean that every brother that's teaching the right doctrine 
or as part of the elect is necessarily a part of Great Millstone. But I just have to identify it that way, you know, because people get simple. Verse two, it says, and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. And that's the prophecies. The word of the most high doesn't return void. It tells you that when you read Isaiah 55 and 11. So all of these prophecies, they're going to come to pass. It says, and that compels us, that emboldens the elect who've been given this gift of faith to preach more boldly, man. Because we know that great Babylon America has already been destroyed in the spiritual realm, man. Everything just has to manifest in the flesh. It says, and cause them to be written in paper for their faithful truth. That's why the Bible, it stands the test of time and you have to put the Bible over any other knowledge because it contains prophecy, man. Verse three, it says, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So incredulity, that means uh, disbelief. So most of this world, they're set up to disbelieve. And right now we're in an age of people becoming more atheists. Everyone wants to do, be in, in complete rebellion mode against the ways of the Heavenly Father, man. So when they see men out boldly proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, there's a lot of disbelief. There's a lot of scoffing and mocking and trolling that goes on against the prophets for speaking the word of prophecy, for speaking truth, man, speaking words of faith, which is going to ultimately lead to salvation. That's what these people, they don't, they don't know that they they the, the most high hasn't his hasn't given them the foresight to consider the latter end. Verse four, second as 15 and four, it says for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all of these people who don't believe, they're going to die in their disbelief. They're going to die in their unfaithfulness, man. You know, like it says in Romans 3, so what, so what if some shall not believe? Shall it make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid, let the Most High be true and every man a liar, as it is written. I'm loosely paraphrasing Romans 3 and 3. So whether you like it, believe it or not, it's not going to change the outcome as far as prophecy is concerned and the will of the Heavenly Father being done on earth, man. And namely destroying Babylon the Great, which is America, and delivering the elect of his people out of the grasp of the, the wicked, oppressive ruler, Esau Edom. And if you don't know who Esau Edom at this point in time, man, you just better look it up, you know. But I'm going to go to the next scripture, just further emphasizing the point and how the word of faith which we preach it's going to lead to salvation. I want to get this in uh, Romans, the, the 10th chapter, and I'll start at the 8th verse. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. So the word of the Most High is being put in the, in the mouth of the prophets. Even when we do videos and stuff, you may have uh, uh, some scriptures in, in a little lesson planned out, but then the spirit will take over, man, you know, because these are ultimately the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. The Heavenly Father in the name of his only begotten son, man, which Yahweh Shah, the son of the Heavenly Father, the book is written. Everything that's written within the book is written of him. For lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. It tells you that in Psalms 40 and 7. When you read in John, the first chapter, it says that the Lord is the word. So that's how we learn our Lord and Savior. That's how we come into the likeness of mind of Yahweh Shah through the word. But then it's just it's more than another level than just belief. Your belief should compel action because James said faith without works is dead. The next level, just through your, your, your belief, you're compelled to speak. To confess. I'll start over Romans 10 and 8. It says, but what said that the word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart In heart, we know is your mind. It's not talking about your actual uh, heart that pumps blood. It says, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. So the word that we preach, man, it's, it's words of faith because everyone is not going to believe for, the, for, the, for, for one. You know, the Most High had blinded some that they're not going to be able to see. And it says the word of faith, which we preach. So we preach the word of faith. But I'm going to continue on because... Y'all read verse nine. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh Shah and shalt believe in thine heart that the most high Yahweh hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
And this is only talking about the elect of the nation of Israel, man. From Genesis to Revelation, the Lord, he's only dealing with the nation of Israel. And on this side, the elect. You know? So if the elect that were set up in the spirit to have the gift of faith, to repent, to believe, and to confess that the Lord and believe in their heart that the Lord, you know, he raised from the dead. Those are going to be the ones that are going to be saved, man. Because you got so-called Christians out there <laughs> under a false reality that they're already saved somehow. But all you got to do is ask them a simple question. What are you saved from? Because they don't believe in prophecy, man. We're coming into the greatest destruction ever known in the history of man, man. Thermonuclear destruction. So even the remnant of the nation of Israel are going to have to be saved. It says that the righteous shall scarcely be saved, man. But we're going through that process through just our belief and our faith in the word. And that word compels us to confess the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in the face of this world that's under the control of Satan. That's going to ultimately lead to our salvation. So that's why we boldly and just fervently speak in the spirit, man. Verse 10, it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So that's one level because right now I've perceived through the spirit. You got a lot of Jake that agree. And then another level of agreement is you'll you actually believe, man. You're fully persuaded in your mind that the words of faith that you heard is the truth. But then there's another level beyond that. The second part, it said, I'll read it again. Romans 10 and 10, it says, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So the Lord, Yahweh wants those men that are about the confession to openly proclaim the name and glorify Yahweh on earth in the midst of all manner of adversity, man, because this world, you know, is totally set against Yahweh man. And there is a stronghold of deception and the lies that's being torn down by the words of faith with we, which we preach as well, man. So that's why it's important just to always be in the spirit of, of confessing, man, you know, because we have the faithful testimony of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, you know. We were eyewitnesses of his glory if we believe that he wrote that he rose from the dead. So that's going to put you in the spirit to confess more and more as we see the day of our Lord approaching. Oh, yeah. It was something I want to get, I believe, in Isaiah. Yep. This is Isaiah 62. And in, um, in six, it says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. And the watchman is talking about the prophets. In the ancient times, they were known as the seers. In the ancient prophets, you know, they're being raised back up, man. In these times that we're in today, man, the brothers that you see on the highways and the byways boldly proclaiming the, the word of faith of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah, being about the confession of the kingdom of heaven and the destruction of the sinful kingdom. And Jerusalem is a people before it's a place that's talking about the Israelites, man, because wherever the Israelites are, that represents Jerusalem, even though it's going to come a time where the, the true people are going to be set back up in the Holy Land over there, you know. In the land of Israel. And it's not going to come through no treaty or no war. The Lord is going to place his people back in that land. Like the scripture says, it says, I set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. So brothers that have the, the, the word of faith, man, and we in the spirit to confess we have to confess day and night and not just only in, in, out on the highways and putting up videos. It could be through prayer, just through your meditation, just glorifying that name, man. It says, keep not silence and give him no rest till he established until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. And right now we're pleading the Lord to, to overthrow our enemy, man, and to deliver us out of his cruel hands, man. So that's why we're fervently in the spirit to always, you know, put up these shows, man. 
go out on the highways and the byways and to teach, man. Because through the word of faith, which we preach, is going to lead to salvation. It's going to lead to the downfall of our enemy. It's going to lead to the kingdom of heaven being established on earth to where the Israelites are going to be back in power. Having dominion, having our women back in order, our children, our families, all of these things that we long for within this world, we're going to have it all in righteousness in the kingdom, man. All just through this word of faith being spoken fervently, man. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Isaiah 58 and 1, it says, cry loud, Salakia, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob, their sins. So that's what's going on right now. We're crying aloud and sparing nobody's feelings, emotions, and we're lifting up our voice like a trumpet. The trumpet is one of the loudest instruments in the band, you know, for the brothers that's doing this thing the right way, I'll just start with Great Millstone. You know, we don't be using no audio devices and microphones to project our voice. Brothers, just go out bold in the spirit and speak, man. And we're basically compelling our people to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the wages of sin is death. The house of Jacob that represents the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with the angel. You know, so we're trying to save the elect of our people we're trying to seal the elect of our people so we can get the hell up out of here man so the lord can come and deliver us you know and it all starts through that spoken word this is a major a mighty work so brothers man you know don't feel like this is just a monotonous process when we got to go out and speak you know when we get together and do classes and do these lessons and whatever capacity we've been given to serve Man, it's gonna all it's gonna lead to our salvation, man. Just all through the spoken word, man, because that's how the Lord created everything. You know, Yahweh, the 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 most high, he created everything just by a spoken word. So this is this is true power, man, being made manifest, you know, here in our time. And we're gonna continue to go from glory to glory. Lord willing, we're enduring this thing, man. But I'll get this prophecy and I'll I'll end out the short lesson. Just to kind of bring it full circle on how the word of faith which we preach is going to lead to salvation. Yo, th this is it right here. Yeah, I'll start at 13, actually. This is St. Matthew 24 and 13. It says, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So this is just more exhortation for the, the, the body of believers, the hopeful elect. You know, we got to uh, give... Uh, diligence to make our calling and election sure and we also must endure to the end man you know because this is a marathon you know and it says the same shall be saved verse 14 here's the point it says in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so that gives us hope and boost our faith that we're that much more closer to the end because the spoken word, the confession of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad is glorious gospel, which the gospel is the good news concerning the kingdom of heaven. This word has been preached throughout the world, man. Not just here in America, but throughout all the different countries, man, throughout the earth. Brothers are rising up and going out there speaking and, and boldly confessing the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad. So we know we're at the end of this world, man. Now, the earth abided forever, like it tells you in Ecclesiastes, but world, when it talks about the world coming to an end, that namely is talking about an age or a rulership. Esau's rulership, his world is about the end. And then after it, something greater that follows, which is the kingdom of heaven, which is going to play out on earth with the Israelites in power, man. So this is just beautiful times we in, man, you know, just, um, Hold on to the faithful word until Yahweh Shah comes to deliver us. So with all being said, Lord willing and certified, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.